stand to your feet. We'll start with a good old page six on our hymnal. Happy Mother's Day to all of you who are mothers. Beautiful day. God has made for us to enjoy it. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. All right. We'll start with page six. <clears throat> While traveling through.
said. If you're a child of God, you have a place awaiting you, have a mansion prepared just for you, perfect, just for you. You know, God is just so good to us. He is, and he gives us just what we need to make it through this life. He gives us the, the gift of his presence. That's what we were just talking about in our Sunday school. You know, it's not the things that he gives us, but he, he himself is with us. And with him, we have everything else. You know, if we have him, everything else he will supply. So why should we uh, worry? Amen. Let's turn to page 92. Ah, uh, another one. I think we follow in the, uh, <clears throat> the theme this morning of heaven, being happy in the Lord. How about this one? Just a little talk with Jesus. Make things right. Amen. Whatever your situation is, whatever you're going through, just a little talk with Jesus. Make it right. Page 92 on our hymnal. <clears throat> I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles, hear our faintest cry, and serve by him by. Feel a little prayer will turn in, know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. All right, you want to make each other's welcome? you find your way back to your seat. Uh, we don't have ushers this morning, so uh, if you brought your tithes and offerings, as, uh, I hope you do, 
uh, drop him off on the, at the box back there and I'll put him uh, where, where they're supposed to go. So no ushers this morning, just uh, deposit your uh, tithes and offerings in that box in the back, okay? So now you want to go back to the second verse, second verse of page 92. Uh, you ready? Sometimes my passenger without a ray of cheer And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day The mist of sin may rise and hide the starry sky But just a little talk with Jesus clears the way Have a little talk with Jesus Tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. Feel a little prayer will turn it. Find a little time is burning. Find a little clock where Jesus makes it round the last. I may have doubts and fears. My eyes be filled with tears. Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry. By and by, feel a little prayer will turn in. Know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Yes, he will. Maybe Just a little talk with Jesus. And again, Brother Reuben is saying uh, the box in the back. We have a offering box back there. Just slip your tithes and offering in there if you have those. Okay. Let me make some announcements quickly, of course. Today is Mother's Day, and we're going to recognize our mothers in just a moment. But also, if you want to stay around, we're going to feed everybody. Uh, we've got food over in the fellowship hall uh, to feed everybody that wants to stay and eat with us. It'll save you. If you don't have a resident, let me, let me warn you. I've been here too many times. In, in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, many years ago, uh, just, just many years ago, eight or ten years ago, they just they they put out a thing that said per capita, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, more people eat out in Murfreesboro, Tennessee than any other town in the United States, per capita. Now I'm not we're not talking you know New York City now we're talking, but per capita more people eat out in Murfreesboro, Tennessee than anywhere else. If you don't have a reservation, you can forget going to the restaurant today. And if you don't want to, and if you want to fight that, you're welcome to do so. But if you want to avoid that, we got a free, F R E E, free meal for you over in the fellowship hall. That's tur that's turkey and dressing. That's dumplings, uh, corn, green beans, mashed potatoes. I'm sure somebody's thrown a few desserts together, Miss Gail and others. Uh, so we'll have a great time. Tea, sweet tea, sweet tea. Sweet tea, uh, <laughs> hey, drink, coffee. I don't know if we've got coffee. Yeah, we've got coffee. We've got coffee. Okay, so if you don't stay around, do that. Okay. Now, again, Mother's Day lunch, if you've not signed up, ladies, for that yet, is next next Saturday, the 18th, at uh, Bell Buckle Cafe at 11 o'clock. I think the van is going to leave out of here, Miss Sherry. What time? At 10 20. The van will leave the church. For you to go out there, sign up, okay? Memorial Day's coming up. Uh, we have a cookout for the Barber family. As y'all know, the assistant pastor uh, is deserting us. <laughs> Leaving, no. He's been called by God to uh, start a church in Nashville, Tennessee. So we honor that. Uh, like I said, I don't step between God and nobody, okay? So uh, we're going to yeah, give them a little going away. Uh, they're going down to BIMI in Chattanooga for a week in June. So they're going to leave here right after this, I guess, on Monday and go down to Chattanooga. But we're going to you know, honor them and have a, have a thing for them. I'd like for you to bring, we're going to probably have a, uh, maybe a money tree, something of that nature. I know of one need already uh, at the BIMI. BI, 
uh, he needs $1,500, okay? I know he needs $1,500, okay? So we're going to try to help him out there. All right. Again, uh, we're moving on into Father's Day is in June, as we do every year. And we don't have no doilies, and we don't have no decorations, and we eat it off of paper plates and plastic spoons. But, hey, we serve y'all a filet mignon with baked potato, salad, banana pudding, sweet tea out at the pavilion, our land out off the interstate. So all you men sign up, be ready to sign up for that and get in on the filet mignon. Uh, I grill those for you, and I'm thrilled to get to do it, okay? Uh, church retreat is coming up in October up at Way Floyd. Uh, if you haven't signed up, sign up for that. I think we've got about 19 signed up. We have the whole Way Floyd Inn, uh, 32 rooms. Uh, I mean, let me, while I'm talking about that, let me mention uh, Gabe to you. Uh, Gabe has an upcoming surgery to remove a kidney that is cancerous. Uh, he'll be having his surgery on that pretty soon. Uh, so y'all pray for Gabe, Gabe Cogger, okay? But uh, we're going up to Way Floyd. Uh, I think it's, um, I believe I'm right when I tell you this, it, the rooms are 80, 81, $83 a night, okay? We usually go up on Monday, stay through Thursday, leave out on Friday, have a wonderful time. It's a huge game, a huge uh, rec room up there, a full kitchen up there. I get up in the morning, one morning, cook breakfast for you. Uh, but it's a wonderful time to get to go up there and have a great, great time, okay? Again, camp meeting going on the end of the month, the 20th through the 24th at Bethel Baptist Church, which is out there on, I think it's called Woodcrest Drive, which is right across from the Good Shepherd's home. Uh, in the gym there, Brother Danny Mayo, uh, who, whom we sent him out to start that church. Matter of fact, sent him out in the pandemic. Uh, they made a lot of comments about that the other night. To start a church in the pandemic was, was crazy, uh, according to everybody but God, okay? They're running now in the 40s and 50s. Probably got more there today than we got, most likely. Uh, but y'all continue to pray for that. But the, the meeting will be May the 20th through the 24th. That's Monday night through Friday night. Again, don't forget about Ms. Chavella and Brad, upcoming surgery. I believe Brother Ruben's going to sing for us now. I have sung this song before, but I haven't sung it in over a year. It's one of uh, Stephanie's favorite songs, so in honor of mothers. I'm going to sing it this morning. I hope you can do a good job, and I hope you, you had a blessing out of it. It's called Don't That Sound Like Heaven. There's a window into heaven I can close my eyes and see Where there are no earthly struggles and the souls there are set free Where the deaf and dumb are shouting Cause the blind can finally see And those crippled legs are dancing Out across the crystal sea now there's a special place in heaven Where the unborn babies play And the rock in arms by mama Whose chains had slipped away And all those unwanted children Can say my daddy He's the key And their smiles and all their faces As they spin around and see Now don't that sound like heaven Don't that sound like home 
Son of God is reigning And all the tears are finally gone Don't that sound like heaven Don't that sound like hope Darkness there is overtaken The price of heaven is expensive Don't you worry about the cost It was paid in full by Jesus When he hung up on the cross And all the things that he promised Will be there Just like he said, as an eternal reminder of the precious blood he shed. Don't that sound like heaven? Don't that sound like home? Where the sun. Of God is reigning, and all the tears are finally gone. Don't that sound like heaven? Don't that sound like home? The darkness there is overtaken by the light that so. Darkness there is overtaken by the light that's always on. All right, if I can get some of my men, brother David, don't sit down yet. Stand up, brother Ruben, you get back up here too in just a second. Uh, Brother Gary, won't you help us out, okay? Uh, I want all of our mothers to stand, all our mothers to stand, all our ladies, okay? We have a little something for you here. Miss Sherry packed up something. I know her. Ain't no telling what that could be, but anyway, uh, these men are going to bring them around to you. If y'all grab a couple at a time, guys, and just like these, give them to these ladies that are standing, as many as you can carry at one time. Put one in your teeth, whatever, you know. <laughs> Brother Gary's done this before. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, he's done that before. While they're doing that, let me mention that the message this morning, I prepared it. I actually prepared it. Been working on it for a couple of weeks. Or so, I started working on it while I was on vacation down at the Woodard's place there in Florida. Had a great time down there. Uh, and after I got it all prepared, I re remembered that it probably wasn't a Mother's Day message for today. Y'all know how I am. I don't like it put in no box anyway. So we, y'all can be seated once you get your, we're going to give you a hand, but y'all can sit down if you want to. You don't have to stand up all the time. Let's do give them a hand, okay? The moms. So in order to make it a Mother's Day message, I gave it this title. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be a Samson. Okay? So this fits right in. It almost makes me think of a song. Don't let them play guitars and drive them old trucks. Let them be preachers and teachers and such. Okay, that works, don't it? That works. If you'll turn to Judges, we're going to talk about Samson this morning, okay? We're going to talk about Samson this morning. Judges 16, verses 16 through 20 will be our text this morning. 
Judges, the book of Judges, okay? And we'll read God's word. It says in Judges 16, 16 through 20, And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death that he, that he, took, he told her all his heart and said unto her, Thou, There hath not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, the boy gave it away, then my strength will go from me and I shall be weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up at the, come up this once, for he has shown me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and, and brought money. That was the whole reason for that. Brought money in their hand. And she made him to sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and he kept, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head, and she began to affect, afflict him, and his strength went from him. And, he, and she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out at, as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. And he wist not that the Lord had departed from him. Let's pray. Father, again we come. Thank you today for this day. A day that we've assembled here, Lord, to worship and praise you. That's the whole purpose of our being here today. Is to come and hear from you. Lord, because we feel your presence in this building right now. You move through here just any way you wish to do so. You have free will today to do whatever you wish to do. And but Lord, I'd ask you, if there's one person in this room that doesn't know you as Savior, that you would, you would convict their heart and impress on them to, to receive you as their Savior. And let this be the day of salvation for them. Thank you, Lord, again. Thank you, Lord, again, that we can, that we can be in this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, the story of Samson, y'all, is a sad story. One of the saddest in the Bible, I think. He had so much potential. Is this on? But I want this on. Is the last, is, okay, is this on? Okay, yeah, that's good. He had so much potential, uh, but, he, but he lost it because of sin. He never reached his full potential because of sin. Samson lived his life uh, in, a, in a prideful, in a prideful, pleasure-seeking way and led, it led to a shameful and a, and a tragic end for him. This downfall started in his heart, y'all. It showed itself through rebellion to his parents and, and to God. He allowed his fleshly, his fleshly desires to rule over him and, and finally concluded uh, it concluded in captivity, blindness. Y'all know the story of Samson and death. Most of you learned this story or heard this story back when you were just maybe in, in, in a, a child. You are just a child. But the big question is, what might have happened? What might have been? What could have been when Samson's life? The phrase, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, occurs more times here than anywhere else in the Bible. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. It occurs more than any other place, any, uh, more times here than any other place in the Bible. We remember Samson's end. As a, he's blinded, broken. He's a prisoner of his enemy. And today I just want us to, to, to look at how he got to that place. How he got there. First thing I noted <clears throat> was Samson was born for a reason. Samson was, Samson's birth was a miracle. Samson's mother could not have children. Listen to the scriptures. You turn there if you wish to. Judges 13, 3 says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art, bar art, art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Going over to verse 24 in that same chapter, and it says, And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. And, and the child grew, 
and the Lord blessed him. Just honor me for a few minutes as I chase a rabbit. See, Samson was an only child. It's probably pretty sure that his parents spoiled him. Most only, only uh, fam most families have an only child. They spoil them rotten. My wife was an exception to that. She's an only child, but her daddy made her uh, lay a floor one time up there in the women's building up there. I don't know what they call it now, the women's club up on up, up around the uptown. He made her work. He taught her how to change a battery in a car and fill up the car with gas and do those kind of things. He tried to make a tomboy out of her, but she didn't quite go that way. I, I could save a lot of money on makeup, but anyway. Uh, Hey, but they probably spoiled him. Gave him everything he wanted. It's pretty obvious from the scripture. They gave him everything. His parents had no, but they wound up having no control over him. Now keep in mind that at this point, we're, we're in the scripture that we've just read. Samson is a grown man. He's not a young boy. He's not even. He's not even a teenager. Yet he's still living under their roof and under their authority. We as parents can hinder the work of God in and for our child if we're not careful. I've seen parents who push their children, they have an agenda, and they push their children uh, into sports and beauty pageants and et cetera, et cetera. They're usually, these are usually areas where the parents did not succeed in, and they, and they push their child to be what they could not be. We have our, we have our big plans for our children or our child, and we fail to let God have his plan and his purpose in their life. Remember, we're going to be talking about Samson and the purpose and the plan that God had for his life. Every, every child born is a miracle, y'all. Every child is born of a purpose and for a purpose, and that purpose is for uh, uh, God's purpose. This is why each mother and father needs to take on the responsibility of raising their child in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Let's look at Samson's purpose. Samson's purpose was to be a judge. We're still in Judges, in Judges, but we're going to go to chapter 2. You can go there. I'll read it for you if you trust me to do so. Uh, judges 2, 16 through 18 says, Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them, and yet they would not hearken unto their judges. But they went a whoring after other gods, little g-gods, and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, uh, but, they did not, but they did not so. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it was for it repented the Lord because he had he uh, excuse me, because of their groanings by reason of uh, that uh, uh, of them that oppressed them and vexed them. Samson was born to be uh, for a great reason, y'all. He was to deliver Israel uh, from the Philistines. Our reason for, uh, hey, our reason for being on earth is to serve God. We have, we think it's maybe something different, but it's, to, it's actually to serve God. Not just serve Him, but to serve Him faithfully. To be faithful and serve Him faithfully. To fulfill His purpose and His plan for our lives. I am in the perfect will of God right now. I wasn't for a long time. I ran for 14 years. I ran for 14 years. The Lord called me to the ministry when I was 40 years old. Down at Miracle Baptist, sitting in a pew. Preachers up preaching. And I heard someone say, you're supposed to be up there. And I looked around and there wasn't nobody there. A few minutes later, it said it again. I still neglected it. Shrugged it off. See, God has a plan. And when God has a plan for your life, he ain't going to give up on it. And Brother Tim hit on, hit on a lot of that this morning in Sunday school class. See, the perfect will of God, we'll let God have his way in our life. 
whatever that is. He wants us to deliver, deliver the gospel to sinners uh, and give them the glorious salvation message. Samson failed, failed his reason for life. Millions of people have failed and are, and are, and are still failing every day to fulfill their reason for life. Why? The very next point I have about Samson. Samson's rebellion. Rebellion is defined as the act, hey, the act contrary to authority, to act contrary to authority. In other words, in other words, just to dis disobey. Disobey. Samson was given greatness from God, but he used it for selfish pursuits and he dishonored his authority. Most all of our troubles begin with a lack of obedience, y'all. It's a lack of obedience. Disobedience to the employer. Disobedience to the teachers. Disobedience to the, to the civil laws, the family, the parents, the spouse, or whatever. Listen to Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourself for they which watch for your souls, as they, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For this is the, un hey, for this is unprofitable. This is unprofitable for you. So, 1 Samuel 15, 23, for rebellion is the sin of wickedness. Listen to this now. Witch, witchcraft, excuse me. And, and stubbornness and, and is, uh, hey, is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. Hey, talking about Saul. Time after time, Samson's life, in his life, we see him failing to obey. We see, we see him hey, being disobedient, and that disobedience bringing forth terrible consequences for his life. Samson's just, hey, his disobedience started early. He didn't, he didn't just wake up one morning and, and decide that, hey, he would reject all that he had been taught about the Lord. His parents were doing that. They were teaching him. They were trying their best. Hey, he, he first was disobedient to his immediate authority, to his parents. He was rebellious to his parents. Judges 14, 3 says, Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my, my people that, hey, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? Listen to what he responded. And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me. Get her for me. For she pleaseth me well. Samson was obsessed by women. He was a womanizer. Let me add this. There are many women who are obsessed over men. They're meninizers. <laughs> Y'all ain't never heard that word, have you? <laughs> That's a Westview word. I, <laughs> you won't find it in the dictionary, Miss Alice, but it's a Westview word, right? Okay. <laughs> hey, hey. Delilah, I think, could have been one of those. Outside of salvation, the most important decision that a person will make is going to be who they marry. Better think about that. Samson's parents, they tried their best to get him to marry someone who believed in the true God. But Samson only wanted someone who would please him. Please him. Samson was blessed with, with good, godly parents who loved him, and, and did whatever they could uh, to train him up and, and, and encourage him and provide for, provide for Samson the needs of his desires. Samson rejected them and their guidance. God's plan is for children to, to obey and honor their parents. Y'all know, oh, hey, y'all know Exodus 20 and 12. Honor thy father and thy mother. Uh, hey, that the days of thy, hey, that may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And over in Ephesians 6, 1, it says, Children, obey, obey, obey your parents in the, in the Lord. For what? For, the, for this is right. All right? It's 
Hey, it's right to do so. Colossians 3.20 says, Children, obey your parents in all things. In all things. For this is, the will, this, this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Often, often a life of rebellion begins with just simple disobedience. Samson rebelled against God. In Judges 13, 3 through 5, it said, The angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore, jumping down to verse 4, it said, Now therefore, uh, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from his womb, and he shall begin to deliver the Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Judges 14 again, verse 8, And after a time he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. He had ripped the lion in half, y'all, the strength he had. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hand and went on eating and came to his, mother, his father and mother and he gave them and they did eat. But he, he told, them not, told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. Deuteronomy 23, 21 says, what thou, Hey, when thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord my God, thou shalt not, hey, not slack to pay it. Hey, for the Lord thy God will surely, will surely require it of thee. And it would, hey, be a sin if, hey, in, in thee if you don't do it. Be careful about vowing a vow. I've heard many a young man and many others who have been, said they've been called by God to preach the gospel. And, and they make that vow to do so. But then they turn from it. Be careful. Be careful. I think that's one of the things that kept me for so long wrestling with God about my going into the ministry. I, I didn't feel adequate. I still don't. I stand before you today. I can't do what I do without God. We, Brother Troy and I talked about it coming in the door. Talked about it today in Sunday school. We can't do anything without him. You can't do anything without him. Samson disobeyed the the Lord, by eating, eating honey out of a lion's carcass. Hey, Samson was in a, in a place. He was in a place where he should not have been. Oh, boy. Being in the wrong place led him to engage in, in, the, wrong, in the wrong actions. Like Brother Tim said this morning. You can't, you, hey, you may, have to, you may be a lot of things going on in your life, but you can only do one thing at a time. If you're doing right, hey, you can't do wrong. Okay, but if you're doing wrong, you can't do right. So he 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 got loose. He he's in the wrong place, wrong. Uh, hey, and doing the wrong thing. We need to we need to learn a strong lesson from this. Sin is a progression, and we'll and we'll we'll fall in the direction that we lean. We'll fall in the direction that we lean. A story is about a man who worked in a chemical factory, and one day he dropped a, a drop of acid on his leg. It ate through his pants and, and, and into his leg, just a little bit there. Because the spot was not very big, it was just a small spot on the outside, he just went and put a little cream on that. A few days later, it got, got a little, little leg, got, well, it got a little hot and sore and it was bothering him a lot, and he tried some other uh, probably home remedies. The next week, he woke up in the hospital having his leg amputated. The doctor said, I've got some sad, sad news, sir. The infection had, was so bad, we had to take your leg. But the infection has gotten into your whole body, and there's nothing we can do. He died a few days later. That's what sin does. That's what sin does. James 1, 14, hey, 1, 14, 15 says, But every man is tempted when he is hey, drawn away, drawn away by his own lust. And, and hey, and enticed. Then, then when hey, then when lust have hey, when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. Okay. 
See, temptation is not a sin. It's when you take of it. It's when you take of that temptation. Love, hey, love not the world. These are the things that are in the world. If any man love, if any man loves the world, the Lord, hey, the love of the, Lord, of the Father is not in him. Wow. That lust of the flesh that drives us to sin. Many of us have been there. We know what we're doing. Hey, we know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. So again, here's Samson. Samson, he gets, he gets redirected. Samson got redirected. God wants his people to follow the, his plan, not their plan. God's people can do this by, by just focusing on the things that please God. Philippians 3, 13, 14, says, Brother, I count not myself to be, hey, to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the, uh, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Just keep on, keep it on, keep you focused. Put on the blinders. Keep you focused on what God wants you to do, what God has planned as has planned for you to do. Hey, Samson lost his focus. His focus, his focus was on his accomplishments. He never gave God credit for anything that he'd done in his life. Samson was proud of his tearing a line in half and, and had to go back to it. If Samson had not returned to see, hey, to see that line and that he had killed and had never, uh, never seen the honey that, uh, hey, in that carcass, uh, hey, he would not have probably broken his vow to God. He chose to go back to his former sin, not, not intending maybe even to partake of it, but, hey, but to glory in it for just a, just a moment. That, that, led, that led him to huge failure, y'all. It led him to failure. He was all about him. Y'all know, pride. Pride. That's a, that's, a, that's a terrible thing to have in you. Is to be so proud. That's where he was. He was in, wrapped up in this pride of himself. I guess so he could attract women. You know, that was his whole, whole thing. Brag on myself and it'll attract women. I don't know if women are that gullible or not. Maybe they are. Hey, when, 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 hey, look here, what's happened? What happens to him? Right here. When Samson met Delilah, he had a choice. He, he, he could have fled from that temptation. He went back to the vineyard to, to take a woman he was not supposed to marry simply because he, hey, uh, it was, it was, he was selfish in his desire. She may, have, she may have pleased Samson, but she certainly didn't please God. Samson wasn't listening to God at this time. What things in our life keep us from hearing from God? What things get in our way and hinder us from listening to God? I fought him for 14 years. I know what this is like, y'all. You can tune him out anytime you want to. You can quench that spirit anytime you want to. I call it the external Holy Spirit. See, once you get saved, there's an internal Holy Spirit. But there's also an external Holy Spirit that works on you also. I had it all around me. I had it all around me. I was in a great church at that time. I was in a great church at that time. I had, I had like-minded believers all around me. God was putting things up in front of me about Him and, and being in church and doing His, uh, doing His will and serving Him. And, and I was just kind of blah, 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 with it. Trying to cut it out. Sh uh, saying, no, 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 you don't want me. No, 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 because I'm making, I'm making good money and I've got a nice home and three cars and, and I've got, uh, hey, vacations and I've got all these things going for me, 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 me. It was all about me. And God said, no, hey, I'll get you down so low you'll be, hey, you can do chin-ups on a dime. I'll put you down if I have to. Don't make me go there. Just surrender. Just surrender. Give in. Quit running. Quit running. So I finally quit running. 
Let's look what happened to Samson. Through all this, Samson's ruin. Samson lost his power. He lost the power of God. Judges 16, 20. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself, shake those locks. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. He wished not that the Lord had departed. People think that the saddest moment of Samson's life was in his final days when he was blinded and grinding at the Philistines uh, hey, like an animal. I believe it was when he realized that no longer did he have a relationship with God right here. I believe that's what was the saddest time of his life. We must understand that our sins separate us from God and deprive us of his fellowship, of his, uh, of his power, of his blessings. Isaiah 59, 1, 2 said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot, hey, that it cannot save, neither is the ear heavy, that he cannot hear. But your iniquities, your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his, hey, hid his face from you, that he will, that he will, that he will not hear. Wow. What a sad time that would be. What a sad time that was right here. Right here for, hey, for Samson. To be separated from God by our own sin and our stubbornness is a sad, sad place to be. Bob Jones Sr. said, all, he said this often, he said, hey, don't sacrifice the permanent on the altar of the immediate. Don't sacrifice the permanent on the altar of the immediate. Living for the moment can bring lifelong consequences, y'all. But there is a better note here. Let's look at it. Samson was restored. Over and again. Over in chapter 16 here. Verses 28 through 30. And Samson called unto the Lord. He kind of woke up, y'all. He's blinded now. Uh, You read read a little bit before that, his hair started to grow back. The Philistines weren't very smart. They must not have been very smart. But I don't think the hair would have made a difference anyway. They knew that's how they got him before. They cut his locks off. But now his hair started to grow back. But here's the key. Samson called upon the Lord. And said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once. He just wanted one more time. O God, that I may hey, be, be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two medium call, uh, pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was born, born up. Of the one with the right hand and the other with the left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself and with all his might. And the, hey, and the house fell upon the lords and upon the, and those lords are little g lords, lords and upon all the people that were therein. So that the dead which he uh, slew at his death were more than, hey, than they which he slew in his life. If you recall, I think I recall there was a young lad there was it happened to him. I got a feeling that he said to that lad, get out of here. Get out of here. This place is fixing to crumble. There he was between those two pillars. But God was on him now. See, the lesson here is God will, hey, God can and God will forgive you. God can and he will forgive you. No matter what you may have done in your life, it's never, never, never too late to still be used by God. It may, not, it may not be how God planned it to be. You may have messed that up, but never quit. 
never quit on God. He'll never quit on you. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Samson, at the end of his life, realized, hey, realized that he needed God. He needed God back in his life. Where are you this morning? Do you know him as your Savior? Do you know the Lord as your, as your personal Savior this morning? I look around this auditorium and I see faces very familiar to me. Faces of whom I know and have known. And I know your testimony. I know your life. I know you're saved. But if there's anyone in here that's not, do not do it today. Don't put it off. Don't put it off. But what about us? The title was Mamas Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be a Samson. Mama, Daddy, where are you with your child? Where are you with your grandchildren? See, us grandparents have a responsibility somewhat too. We gotta watch over those grandchildren. As you know, in our society today, that's getting worse and worse. A lot of grandparents are raising their grandchildren. It's sad, but that's happening. Are we willing to, to hey, take full responsibility there? To try to do all we can to bring them. God's got a plan for their life. There's not a person in this room that God doesn't have a plan for you. He has a plan for your life. And he has a purpose for your life. And he didn't just save you for you to sit in a pew. He didn't just save you for you just to, just to do nothing. He, he wants you to serve him faithfully. He wants you to give him your all. He ought to be number one in your life. I love my wife with all my heart. But she doesn't come before my God. She doesn't come before my God. I love Him. I love Him. And I want to serve Him. And I want to be in the perfect will of my God. Where are you this morning? Where are you this morning? Piano's playing. The invitation's open. You come now. If that, as need, you come now. Whatever the need might be, I may not hit on what you need. But you come now as to what you, hey, just, just, talk to, just talk to the Lord for a little while, okay?